What's up, Rockers? Hey, I'm Kaz. And I'm Shane. Welcome to another exciting episode of For the Record with Kaz and Shane. Kaz, we're in your freaking photo studio for the first time, hanging out with this amazing band, Plasma Canvas. Yes, yeah. It's the first time we've actually had like a full band. Full band. You know, and we're so honored. We met Ren Ash uh, about, what, last August? A little August? over a year ago. A little over a year Dece- ago. So August in Denver. Hot, yes. hot, sweaty Denver that day. We were. We did a photo shoot. And since then, we've had a couple new. But Jared was with the shoot, but we also have a new addition. Who are you? I'm Jordan. Jordan. And you play? Drums. Drummers. I love drummers. <laughs> I'm Miles, and uh-huh. I play guitar. Awesome. And Jared on bass? Yes. On I play four rock and strings. Bass. Yes. yes. Rock and bass. <laughs> rock and bass. And then Ren, the singer. Yep. Great to see you guys. And guitarist. And guitarist, yeah. We, <laughs> and so writer. That was a pretty amazing photo shoot last August. <laughs> it was the longest, you know, I've assisted Brian just moving lights and shit for a long time, but this was like a full-blown photo shoot that was so much fun, and so thanks for coming. You guys are out on tour. Yes. Yeah, on yes, tour. We are. yes, we are. Yeah. What do you think about touring these days? Oh, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of smells. Smells. Describe the smells. I don't think I should do that. No. <laughs> yeah, unholy. we all, we'll keep this one on the clean side. Then. Unholy. Yeah. It smells unholy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we need to go. And how many vehicles do you have? As one vehicle. Just, just one. That. So we just open that up, and it'll all come wafting out. Yeah. Well, and that's like we were talking before. You know, all this filming when you guys first got here, right? been in touch with Ren and I was like you know what I see you got some new photo members let's get you some new shoots and it's like you guys are with um side one dummy records and they have been like so good to me so good to you guys you know your new album is out that came out what about February 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 February. it's amazing and um I just really like when I got introduced to you guys by Lisa Johnson from side one dummy I was like so excited. I was like, "Cool! I can't wait to do your guys' photo shoot." And then just shout out Lisa. Yes, she's the best. But man, it's uh, man, it's cool. Like, this is like the band now. You guys are. <laughs> that was a pretty gnarly. Sorry, bird. I thought it was quiet. <laughs> no, that's going to sound great with the soundboard. It's really going to be enhanced. You can't do that. You can't capture that sound without a soundboard, right? <laughs> yes. But like this here is what I would consider now, like. You know, just watching all your guys' videos and stuff. This was what I would consider the Plasma Canvas classic lineup right now. This is, like, pretty cool. Like, how did you guys get together with, you know, um, Miles? Jordan. Jordan. I'm like, I'm brain We're old. We are so old. Yeah, I'm going to let you talk about how you joined this band. Cool. I'll, I'll talk about myself first. So, Jared and I are, like, the inseparable rhythm section. We're in at this point, three bands together. And uh, when when Evelyn stepped back from Plasma Canvas, I'd been a fan of the band, as Jared had been for a long time. We both loved the band, and it just seemed kind of natural that I'd start jamming with Adrian and Jared um, as, as they were looking for a new drummer. And uh, so here we are. I love playing with, with, the, with them, and um, the rest is kind of history. It was kind of like um, Evelyn stepped away, and I was like, I know a guy, and Adrian was like, you're in so many bands with this person already. And I was like, just play with him. Just play with him like a couple times. And then I think it was like two weeks later, Adrian was like, he should join the band. Yeah. And then Miles, how did you get started with him? Um, well, I was a fan of the band for a couple of years. And my mom and dad always told me that Plasma Canvas is one of their favorite local bands for a couple of years. And then I started listening to them. And then she asked me to fill in on bass one time because they didn't have a bass player for a long time. It was just her and Evelyn. And uh, well, what happened was we had we had a show that was a big show, and our bass player had like, um, you know, bass player at the time had uh, oh he that's had a trip what it was. to Mexico booked. That's so what it was. like he had to you know he had to go do that. Shout out to Alan Lavacek and Travis Mason for playing on the record. Y'all are wonderful. Uh, but yeah, Alan had to go to Mexico uh, for a little vacation that could not be rescheduled. So Miles filled in on bass, and then you know it was like after after that show. To be honest, it was kind of just like, man, does he really have to not be in the band? Because like I, I was just like, I have had so much fun just rehearsing and jamming, and the show we did was so much fun. So it was just like it was a no brainer for me. As soon as we needed another guitar player, I was like, I know the guy. I, I know the dude. 
I wasn't, uh, and I wasn't a hundred percent sure if I wanted to join the band or not, just because I didn't, I didn't want to be in. I thought being in two bands and working and trying to do everything else at life uh, is just was just a lot. But when I found out that it was going to be all three of them, then I had no question, and I was like, I'm definitely joining that band. So. And the truth was, like, you know, I, I started Plasma Canvas about seven years ago um, because I, you know, I grew up in, like, a small town outside of St. Louis, Missouri, and I wrote a bunch of songs about, like, being a trans woman in a small conservative town and how, like, kind of harrowing of an experience that was. And when I moved to Colorado, I started this project to document these songs, and it was just supposed to be a record. And I ended up finding a drummer named Dave Seitz, and he played the drums on the first record. Um, and then uh, after he stepped back to like go to school and stuff, Evelyn, um, our previous drummer and my best friend, um, she and I were a two-piece for about five years. And then around early 2021, we started uh, we started bringing in like a guitar player and a bass player because you know. 2020 happened and we were supposed to go on tour with lag wagon and less than jake and it was gonna be really cool but then 2020 happened so i was like if i survive this i'm making the art that i want to make and i'm not going to be stopped by like okay we have to have drums and guitar and vocals and that's it like i wanted to write the parts that i felt the songs needed to have and so when we made the dusk record it was everything that i needed to get out of my soul and um you know, just having having those parts there, I think, really stepped up the band. And having these three members do this with me, I think, is... Uh, I, I couldn't ask for, for anybody else. I think this is awesome. I remember last year doing the shoot, I was trying to contain myself. And, like, the first questions I asked you were, what was it like recording with Bill Stevenson? I was just so anxious. And then, you know, you were telling me about it because I'm, like, so... It's like really one funny. of my favorite drummers and stuff and then now i find out that you know his son's in your band and i'm like sitting here like trying not to like fanboy on miles here but like with that we had conversations going with a while but how cool is that to be around that growing up it's pretty great he's a, he's a very good person he's one of my favorite people ever so i love him oh dad <laughs> hi dad <laughs> that is awesome it's very cool to see that and it's um you know, it's just awesome that they support you in doing this and recommend the band for you to play with. And here it is, you know. It was a, a huge help, obviously, because he took us on tour with him last last time we went on tour. So that was fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah touring with Descendants was uh, pretty fucking sick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was really, really cool. Yeah, and then talk about this tour. Talk about, you guys, you guys are a Denver band. We're Pacific Northwest. I think there's a lot of similarities between the two. Uh, how's this tour been going for you? So far for us, has been it's been amazing. We've been playing smaller venues, house shows, but that's the goal is just to be, you know, like with people we can relate to and in more intimate settings. And so we, we did Butte, Montana, night one, and then... Tacoma night yeah. two, which is two 12 hour drives coming out of Fort Collins. And, uh, we're lucky to be out here now where we have some like one hour, three hour drives. So we're, we're kind of relaxed right now, but honestly it's been everything we could ask for. People are showing up and talking to us and buying merch. And even the smallest show we played so far, everybody we met was amazing, which yeah. is I think why we're doing this play music and meet some good people, see some cool things. Well, I think a lot of like the, uh, the DIY method of touring has come back more than ever like you guys are kind of just you're grinding that's what you do and that's how you get your name out there you know you meet the people you get get them on mailing lists and then you know it's really cool to see bands still doing it because you stick with it and it just shows that you love doing what you're doing you know you yeah. probably wouldn't have it any other way you know and it's yeah. just really cool to build it you know and like i say you guys have a lot of recognition um you know, like Side One Dummy is pretty cool. And you got us here. We just love your band. Um, and so it's kind of cool. It's like you build it up organically from the beginning on your guys' blood, sweat, and tears. It's kind of something to be said for bands that are still doing that, you know, and I can appreciate that so much. Well, and, you know, if I can just, like, love on, you know, the Seattle scene in general, like the wider scene, not just, like, Seattle, but, like, Tacoma and Olympia and stuff. 
um, you know, the things that I've learned about this scene over the last just couple of days of being here and talking to people who are in it, um, you know, it was really, really hard to find shows here. And there's a reason for that. And basically what I was told was that there are a lot of bands. It's a beautifully artistic place to live, but COVID really ravaged the, the venues. And so there are so many venues that used to exist that don't exist anymore. And it's kind of forcing everyone to go back to the old days, which is like, you know, we're going we're gonna to play in our houses. We're going to find, you know, somebody's, you know, warehouse or studio space or something and just do it because we need somewhere to do it. It's, you know, it's a matter of necessity and, you know, the fact that, like, we need this music and we need it to happen, so we're going to make it happen even if the clubs aren't there. I think that's awesome, and I have a lot of respect for Seattle and what everyone's doing to keep the thing carrying on because, you know, I, I thought it was just you know, just a clicky scene that, you know, which I also respect if you've got something really cool that you care about, you protect it and you don't want people to just come in and milk it and, you know, you know, just make profit off of all the work that you've done to maintain and preserve and protect your scene. So I get that, but we're grateful to have been welcomed with such open arms by this community and we have you know, a lot of empathy for this place. And I, I would love to come back as soon as possible. We'd love to have you. We'd have, love to have you get a show in Olympia too. Yeah. I think we can make all this a little Northwest run happen. So what I usually do is bands will do a run. They'll just hub, stay here, go tour. Yeah. You know, speaking of Olympia, I am going to say that gloss is an incredibly important band, not just to me, but to trans people, to hardcore, to punk rock. And it's, um, you know, it's really cool to just be here. I'm, you know, there's a lot of bands that you could gush over being in this entire region. But, you know, me as like a trans feminine person who has been like greatly positively impacted by Gloss, I'm very, very just excited to be in this area. Ash, didn't they just do one show then call it done after that? They didn't do one show. They blew up and, you know, they, they had like two EPs that they put out and they blew up real fast and they were about to get signed to like Epitaph. And they were, you know, they recognized that that would destroy them as human beings. And they decided not to do that and break up instead, which is a move that I think is bad fucking ass. And I have so much respect for them for doing that. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, and showed you, up and they said their piece and then they peaced out. Yeah, Kick ass. <laughs> that is, we had talked about that in Colorado. It's just like very cool, almost like kind of a, I don't know if you'd say like an Operation IV thing or whatever, but like, let's leave it how it was at the pinnacle at the top and done. They went on. They can't get tarnished from there. Incredibly respectable move. Yeah. So let's talk about the place we did the photo shoot last year, 7th Street. Seventh Circle Music Collective. Seventh Circle, that was a really cool place, and that's yeah. sort of been upgraded and lost some of the grittiness that was there when we were there, but you're still a place that you guys perform often? Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, whenever I first moved to Colorado from St. Louis, the day that I moved to Colorado, I played a show at Seventh Circle, and it's been home ever since. And Aaron Say, the guy who um, I think, like, owns the venue or runs it or whatever, he's he's been just such an incredible friend and mentor in my life. And, um, you know, Seventh Circle will never... Uh, leave my heart. It's, it's a very, very special place. And so, of course, I wanted to film some music videos there. And, of course, I wanted to do a photo shoot there because it's a tribute to this place that has been such a, a home for me and so many other punks. And uh, we'll, we'll always love Seventh Circle. Beautiful. That was a great time. We had fun. Jared hammed it up for the camera quite a bit during that photo shoot. That was, <laughs> hammed it up. <laughs> I just make dumb faces all the time. Yeah, they were great, you know, and it's like, God, we'll probably air a few of them on this episode as it'll be Aaron. We'll cut some of those into the podcast. Sure. And we can see that was such a good day. Um, yeah, my, uh, my dad gets mad. He's like, why do you not make a normal face in picture? And I'm like, no one wants to see a fucking is that a normal your, face in is a picture. Is all your family pictures ruined oh, by your like funny faces? Almost every single one. Oh, my um, gosh. Yes, yeah. He, he uh, was a photographer as well, and he was like, I'll quit taking pictures of you if you don't make a normal face. And I was like, you're going to have to stop, thanks. I'm never, <laughs> I'm never going to do that. I'll smile sometimes, though, but I like to make uh, scrunch faces and stuff. 
Yeah, well, let's talk about Dusk. Uh, you know, mentioned it came out in February. What's the reception been like? Uh, is it, I'm, it's amazing. There are some amazing songs on there. I really dig it. How has the crowd and your fans accepted it? They're loving it, I'm sure. Well, I when I joined the band, I was just a fan who, like, answered an ad, essentially. And then I didn't know the album was recorded like ready to go essentially i didn't know the band was on side one dummy still and then i got to like hear it before everyone else did and it is amazing so i heard it as a fan first and i really loved it and how other people it's like whoever has heard it uh tends to like it as well it's definitely like a journey through adrian's mind or a place you can go yeah cool that's a cool way to put it <laughs> yeah, full disclosure, like I was the only one in this lineup who recorded um, on that record, but Miles did the drum edits, which I thought was kind of yeah, cool. I, 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 I worked on the record because uh, the studio that she recorded at is a studio that I work at. Yeah. So I heard it. I heard it in its most raw demo form. And um, when I heard Cross My Heart for the first time, I got emotional and I didn't know why because it didn't even have audible vocals on it. And I was getting emotional, so then I re reached out to Adrian. Uh, I think this was actually a little bit before I joined the band too. I reached out to Adrian about what it was, if she could tell me a little more about it. And then I think that me and her formed a good connection over talking about how beautiful that song is and the rest of the album. But I was, yeah, I loved the album when it sounded like shit. Oh, Jesus <laughs> fucking! I thought it was awesome. And how about you? What did you hear? Before you joined the band, how much did you know about them? Were you a huge fan? You're like, oh my god, I get to play with this band. I get to play on these songs. What's that been like? It's been crazy. I I do drum tech work for the Blasting Room where it was recorded too, so I had kind of been hearing snippets as well as the same way Miles had. Yeah, we were both very familiar with Clive and Candles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the Fort Collins scene is real small, but real. It's it's an amazing scene. It's tight knit, and I'd been following Plasma Canvas since since the beginning. Um, I guess my favorite story about Dusk is that I have a, I have a two year old son and uh, it's his favorite music ever. Um, so it's yeah, there's like, so many videos of him like while we're playing it underneath just like so we, we rehearse at my house and like he, he like will always be either dancing or running around to it. But if we need to calm him down, we put on either blistered world or need and Aww. like without fail, dude calms down like it's actually his bedtime music. We don't do lullabies of like, you know, hey, Alexa. It's bedtime, and she starts playing um, Needs the Bedtime song. <laughs> yeah. So I think you're saying, like, all the daycares and preschools out there, if they want soothing, calming music, <laughs> they need a copy of Dusk. <laughs> yes. And where can we find that? Because you don't have the album with us. That's disappointing. I wanted to buy right. it from you guys. Where can we buy it? Or when can we buy it? Fortunately, we don't have any copies of the record because we sold them all because it's really badass. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, congratulations. <laughs> We but have, like on can, side one dummy yeah, <laughs> site, you can find it on the side one dummy website. And you know, if you want to listen to it for free without you know having a copy or whatever, it's on all the streaming platforms. You can listen to it for free on Bandcamp. Um, yeah, you can you can find it wherever you listen to anything else on streaming. Okay, so now that you guys have been traveling together, so are you guys starting any writing now that you guys are four together? You know, on the road, well, kind of getting some right now, like. New music going uh, between the four of you now. Is that what what process do you guys do for that? So we have one song completely written that we've been playing out at shows. Um, Adrian has at least a record's worth of other material that is ready to go. Yeah. I imagine once we get done with this tour, we're gonna kind of need to sit down and shift gears and start really shifting through that stuff and and writing it out. Um, but there is so much material. I'm really excited for the potential of it. I, I just never stop writing stuff like it's a it's a it's a venting thing for me it's like therapy like I, I have a therapist and I, I do talk to another person who gives me feedback about the things I feel but writing songs has always been a, a thing that helps me get through my life and so like that doesn't stop when you put out a record if anything um, you know after this record came out for a few months I was just like okay I'm all about this um, but you know, the thing about writing a, you know, a record and releasing it is it takes about two years between the time you write the song and the time you're holding the vinyl. 
So by the time the record comes out, you're already kind of at a different place in your life. And, you know, so for me, I'm always writing stuff, but we have a lot of new stuff in the works. But that new song is called Give Back the Blood, and it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty kick-ass. I think uh, we have a good time playing that one. It's also the first song, um, you know, I wrote the guitar parts, but I don't play guitar when we perform it, and I've had a lot of fun just being a vocalist for that song. We do a really mean cover of Rise Above by Black Flag, where I changed all the lyrics to be about trans rights. And... Um, yeah, that's a that's a pretty fun one too. I didn't write that one, but I did rewrite it. <laughs> My song, yeah. As far as our like maybe the songwriting process goes, I, not as far as Adrian's side of it, but for the band is Adrian is a fantastic songwriter. She always has been. So Thanks, we boss. let her do it. We just she writes a good song and then she presents it to us. And if we can if we can add to it, that's a great idea. But we definitely don't want to change it because she's been a fantastic songwriter forever. So, and especially with "Give Back the Blood," I mean, I think she had probably ninety percent of the song written. She was like, she might have even just left it open for interpretation to make us feel a little involved, but she knew <laughs> what she was doing. <laughs> I definitely got. Uh, it's I think it's the first plasma song that starts with just drums and bass guitar, and that was my input on that song. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a weird thing for me to figure out because, you know, the project started as like I wrote a bunch of songs and I found a drummer to play the drums because that was the only instrument I couldn't play, you know, on the record while we were tracking it. And then it fell into being a two piece band for several years and then we made it a four piece band. But like I've always been the person who writes the things, but I never wanted to be like a band dictator, you know, because like. I don't ever want to like micromanage people. I know how much that sucks when I get micromanaged. So like, you know, especially, you know, going forward, it's like Dusk was a record that I wrote almost every part of because I just needed to make this thing that was brewing inside of me. And now that it's been externalized, I can move on. You know, it's kind of like a spiritual exorcism. And what I want to do now is, you know, and the way we've talked about it is, you know, I, I write these lyrics that are about the things that I feel, and I write these guitar parts that I think sound cool and these chords that I, I like the voicings of, but I intentionally don't want to write any anything further than that because I want this to feel and you feel like and be and function as a band, and not just like, you know, you do this, you do this, you do this. Like, even bands like, you know, like Nine Inch Nails technically, like, is Trent Reznor's thing, but, you know, everybody who plays on those records has their own thing that they bring to it, and that's kind of what I want to do is, you know, I want to be able to freely write and express myself, um, you know, to, to get out everything that I need to get out, but I want everyone to feel like their contributions are valued because they are. So... <coughs> We're here in Olympia. Where do you guys go next? You're going to California. Tonight we're playing in Portland. Oh, shit. How can I forget about Oregon? Our neighbors <laughs> to the south. Uh, Portland, where's, where are you playing? It's because you're in Seattle and you're so cool. I, well, <laughs> come on. We're Olympia. We're not as cool as Seattle. We're Olympia. <laughs> yeah, you're right. We will be once we get you guys playing down yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, so Portland, you said Eugene, then a little bit into California. Yeah, then we're playing Oakland. And then we're going back to Fresno because we played there with the Descendants and, like, we just loved it. That was probably my favorite show on that uh, Descendants run. Yeah. Just like as soon as we left, they were asking us to come back. Yeah. Well, that's a good <laughs> sign. Awesome. And yeah, we, we, were happy, we were definitely happy to come back. Yeah. We got some youngins playing with us that were at that show, and they're so stoked. And that's that's the kind of shit I live for, man. Yeah, yeah. they were just people. Uh, they're just some kids who came to the show to watch. And then I was like, "Yeah, I like we have to get them to open up for us because they have their own band as well called so Non Society." Beautiful, beautiful. And then Miles, you get to hang out with the family. It works out good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That the Descendants tour was. The Descendants tour was really funny because we, so we went on a DIY tour before that, and then when we got the Descendants tour, my dad was like, dude, I got you a bunk, because okay. the Descendants, <laughs> Descendants rented their bus, and he was like, dude, I got you a bunk if you want it, and the moment I found out there was a bunk, 
I was fucking gone. <laughs> yeah. I just, I stayed in my two feet by eight foot, two feet by seven foot bunk for like five days Very or nice something. Air conditioned. Yeah, they were driving through the desert and I was sitting in my bunk like, it's kind of cold. I might put on a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> and Specifically my remember chips. like, what was it? Um, the drive to San Diego from where? Like from Fresno to, San Fresno to San Diego was like an oven and we were just in this van that had no AC. <laughs> so it was like, we're going to either bake with all the windows up or we're going to like blast our eardrums out with all the windows down. And uh, yeah, it was like a six and a half, seven hour drive. And then we get there and I was like, hey guys, what's up? And was, we're all just like, fuck you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's good though. Yeah. So, I mean, how cool is that though? If, you know, <laughs> you get to hang around with one of the best drummers ever. Just, yeah, <laughs> Jordan <laughs> Pasquale. Yeah. 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 Well, well, no, <laughs> yeah, there's Jordan. And then your dad's not so bad either. Yeah. And, and like, that's another thing. Uh, like I, I value my dad's opinion very very much and it's probably the most important most important opinion to me and my dad was always a fan of plasma canvas i mean he loved adrian he was always like dude she's such a fucking gnarly guitar player and she's such a solid singer like she's a real musician you know spot on impression yeah <laughs> and then when i told him he was like he was like oh so you're gonna join plasma and i was like yeah and he goes pretty sweet and I was like it would be pretty sweet he was like who's who's all in it now if Evelyn's leaving and I was like uh Jordan's gonna drum and he was like am I Jordan because <laughs> he works at the studio as the drum tech so my dad was like my Jordan and I was like you're Jordan he was like my Jordan's ball shredder <laughs> <laughs> I was like yeah he is and then I was like and Jared the like moving rhythm section he was like you said that's yeah you better join <laughs> Yeah, the tank is full and the road is open. Let's <laughs> fucking go. <laughs> okay, we're at the point of the episode where we ask our musician friends, our guests, these five questions. Are you guys ready? So You've had f- one minute to think about these. <laughs> okay, are you ready? We'll start with Miles. We'll What's go. the best concert you've ever been to? Best concert I've ever been to. That I honestly can't come up with one right now. The best one I've been to in the past like two months was Dead Poets Society in Fort Collins. That was, if you don't know who they are, go check them out. They're great. Okay. I got uh, a really depressing yet really, it, it's a bittersweet story, but right on, on November, or not November, on New Year's Eve 2019, me and Evelyn, who are two trans women, opened up for Against Me at the summit, and it was the coolest fucking thing that I've ever done. And it was really beautiful to see Andrew and uh, and Laura and James and Adam on that stage. Um, and then, you know, the world fell apart for a while and it really sucked, but I will always remember that show as like m- probably my favorite memory thus far of, uh, of, of, you know, of getting to see a show and getting to play a show and how important that Whoops. was. Whoops, hey, timer. <laughs> Keep going. All right, sorry, to cut you off. No, there. no, you're good. I was yeah. rambling. No, no. <laughs> it's like the Oscar speech. They played you off. Right, you <laughs> um, it's a tie. I was 20 or 21 when I saw No Effects at the House of Blues down in Dallas with the Bouncing Souls, and that was like my favorite until recently when my favorite band got back together and I got to see the Mars Volta at uh, Red Rocks, and that was their first time going there. Oh, shit, that so awesome. that uh, was definitely like my favorite concert I've ever been to. Just get to see them actually like play an old school set where they played maybe seven songs and it took up. Uh, like two and a half hours of time. <laughs> and then uh, Kaz just saw Bouncing Souls with uh, Bad Cop, Bad Cop. Bad Cop. Bad Cop oh, yeah, I've been following that. It I looks awesome. I love those guys. Yeah. Uh, what's your the best concert you've ever been to? I can't remember what the venue was, but uh, me and my singer from my other band, Hospital Socks, flew out to San Diego to see uh, Descendants play with Audio Karate, which is my all-time favorite band since I was 10. Awesome. And it was awesome because it was a really intimate indoor club, so everybody was... Really excited. It was it was a fucking party. Sounds amazing. Okay, next question. Uh, what did I say? Uh, people would be surprised that you listen to. Oh, that's a good question. Give me one second. Let's go with. 
Gregory Allen has a coat. Yeah. I am surprised by that. Yes. Shocked. <laughs> How about you? I think in the age of the internet, music and style just accumulates, and I think it's cool that trends are dead, and it's all about customizing your avatar. Um, but with that said, my favorite band of all time is Jimmy Eat World. And, oh. uh, you know, maybe you can hear that in our music, maybe you can't, but sometimes people are pretty surprised when we have songs like Killer Majestic that are, like, the heaviest thing anyone's ever heard. And I tell them, like, my favorite band is the band who made the middle. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I love that band uh -huh. so much. And I, I have Jim's signature Telecaster because it's a great guitar, and it just happened to be his. Um, for me, it would probably be, like, D'Angelo and the Vanguard and, or Hiatus Coyote, which is, like, R&B, like, future soul music. But I think that's just, like, the bass player in me. Um, but, yeah, when you're, like, watching a punk band play and then someone's like, yeah, I just really love, like, uh, R&B, they're like, what? What is going on? Okay. Mine would probably be Car Seat Headrest because they're fucking weird. <laughs> weird is good. Weird is good. Okay, next question. Your house is on fire. What's the one album you run back in to save? Post boredom by Every Time I Die. Okay. Wait, you mean radical? Yes, I mean <laughs> radical. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. I go with a really sentimental pick and say the best of the Guess Who because my mom used to listen to that record with me all the time, and I, I have a very soft spot for the Guess Who. Okay. Um, Amputecture by the Mars Volta. I hope that's the band, the album name now. Lady Melody by Audio Karate. Boy, Audio <laughs> Karate getting a lot of mentions on this show. They're yeah, coming man. up again. You oh, just wait. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I, I know where this is going. You win the lottery. Is it, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. Who do you hire to play your uh, retirement slash celebration party? Money is no object. <laughs> yeah. oh, wait, wait, it's gonna be Miles answer. I'm gonna go with the roots. The roots, okay. I'm playing with Metallica. Oh shit. Nice. I have a Metallica tattoo. Yeah. And uh, I've loved Metallica my entire life. Um watching James and Kirk in the video for one was what made me want to play guitar. So if I ever have the chance to play with Metallica, I will jump on it. Okay. So that includes if I win the lottery. <laughs> Somehow try to get a plug in here for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's up, James? <laughs> um, money's no option. I don't know why y'all are stopping at like one band because I'm throwing a fest. Uh, <laughs> and bands that broke up, they're getting back together. Metallica as well. is its own fest. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, it is. All right, I'm sorry. Um, probably gonna have to get every time I die. The Mars Volta would be there. Coheed and Cambria. If I don't stop now, I'll just keep going. Here we come. We hear it. Audio karate. Audio karate. <laughs> and Harrison Bergeron. Harrison oh, Bergeron. Shit. I was wondering when Harrison Bergeron was going to come up in this. Harrison, Ber are you sure he's not like a talk show host or a game show? That's what it sounds he's a like. Fictional character from a book. And okay. also, everything is Harrison Bergeron. And a band, and an album, and a song title. Wow. It's Harrison totally Bergeron better. on Harrison mm -hmm. Bergeron by Harrison Bergeron. Wow. Yep. Getting an education from we are. <laughs> I was gonna yeah. say, Miles, you should you should tell them the lore of Harrison Bergeron. It's too much. You'll have, have to go to, to Reddit that yourself. Amount of time here? Yeah, I, do, I don't. I think don't think we, think we do. Time. You'll have to go to Reddit on your own. Okay, it's a, it's a hole. Yeah, we'll get lost. Yeah. All right, the last one, and I think that maybe we should change the way we phrase this because we said when Lemmy le meets you at the pearly gates, but you think. Let me meet you in the afterlife is a better way of saying that. Yeah, because you were like, when let me meet you at the pearly... Okay, yeah. so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to interrupt your question. No, no, it's okay. Yeah. So when let me meet you in the afterlife, what's he going to say to you? Hmm. This one's rough. Could have drummed a little bit more. Okay. Uh, it's probably going to be something unintelligible. Yeah. Because <laughs> the man drank a lot. Uh -huh. uh, but hopefully, uh, I, I would like to hear him say "nice guitar tone." That's that's about it. Okay. Uh, he'll say your bass could have been louder, but you have nice facial hair. Uh, yeah. And uh, those funny faces that your dad doesn't like. I like those faces. What if he said yeah. that? Oh yeah. Keep That'd on making those faces. Too. Yeah. Oh, by the end of this tour, I'm definitely um, shaving this off to have the like Lemmy kill Mister. Oh, 
uh, hair. Badass. Okay. He's going to say, this one's called Killed by Death. Ah, yes. I don't know either. What if you said, this one's called Killed by Death, covered by audio karate? Uh, I guess it's tough. Yeah. Can't even yeah. imagine that. Yeah. You didn't say Rise Against, though, either. I didn't. You didn't say Rise Against one time. That's I like your them, second favorite band. Yeah, because that's not how you say audio karate. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Also, hey, Rise Against, we want to play with you. That's it. That's all I got to say. <laughs> I love those guys. So, for, you know, we love you guys, Kaz and I. We know you guys. For anybody that's out there, let's end the episode on this. They've never heard a single song by you guys. What's the one song that you want them to go listen to right now? And let's just add a clip of that song to the end of the episode. What's the song that we should play? Oh, Sorry, man. that was a little aggressive. That's no, right. you're good. Uh-huh. I, I'm going to need a second. Okay. Uh, <laughs> if anybody, or what's, yeah. what would be your favorite song? Do, do me last. If we're going with Plasma Canvas songs, I think, like, Miles and I might agree that Cross, cross Your Heart. Cross My, cross cross my heart. heart. Cross My Heart, man. I, got, I didn't sleep that well last night. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Cross My Heart. Oh, and I was mentioning a couple songs that I really loved, and Kaz mentioned a uh, song that he really... Yes. So what is it? What's the definitive? Wait, I'll, I'll put my uh, two cents real quick. I, for me, it would be Need, but I, I, I don't know. That's just a personal thing for me because I love that song. And yeah, I was about. saying how much I love the chorus on Need. It's so fucking great. Yeah, I would say Need or Cross My Heart would okay. be my picks. I know I'm supposed to be plugging the new record, but I'm going to have to say Killer Majestic. Killer the Majestic. song Killer Majestic, because like that was, you know, the band was almost that that song was called Plasma Canvas when I wrote it, because it is a statement of intent. Like I am here to fuck shit up and you will love it or hate it, but you won't be able to ignore it. And that is what that song is about. So uh, whenever I realized that Plasma Canvas being a metaphor for like honesty and vulnerability and blood on a canvas, I was like, that's a great band name. And that's what I want to do with the whole thing. I turned the song into Killer Majestic. So I would probably say the song Killer Majestic. All right. Well, we're going to be testing our new. Should we say we got somebody new helping us edit this? And the first request is let's end the show with Killer Majestic. Yes. Yeah. Think that about wraps up. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much for, for joining us. Yeah. Thank you both so much. Yeah, yes. so. Kaz and Shay for yes. Yeah. yes. Thank you. Appreciate you. Well, I'm Kaz. And I'm Shay. Thanks for watching another episode of For the Wreck with Kaz and Shay. We'll see you next time. Thank Peace. you. Peace.